Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Old School with you here, and I'm going to give you my review on The Last of Us Part 2. Now, every streamer out there seems to have already done one. I'm taking time, I've taken time to not only play through the game, I'm actually halfway through a second playthrough just because I want to be as fair as possible. I was introduced to The Last of Us after the remastered release on the PlayStation 4, and it changed my gaming preferences to this day. When I completed that game, I knew it was amazing and felt the same way about the creative team at Naughty Dog. From there, I went into the Uncharted series, and again, each title in that series was a home run right up to the very recent end, which left everybody feeling great. They wrapped up a story with a great cast and, and put those characters at a better place. Now, I get the fact that The Last of Us is set in a much darker world and that Happy Endings isn't really what it's about. As a big fan of The Walking Dead, which clearly Neil is also since he stole half their shit from them, I get that sometimes, in order to keep it real, we have to lose some of our favorites. That's just the way it goes. However, in this case, it should have been Naughty Dog's team that had their heads on pikes for the decisions they came up with that have alienated a huge part of their fan base. Now, they can try to twist the facts to meet their narrative all they want, but at the end of the day, they completely shit the bed with this one. And to be perfectly fair, to do this review properly, there are going to be major spoiler warnings moving forward. So if you haven't played the game and you intend to play the game and somehow you haven't seen the fallout of this game already with spoilers included then you might want to stop watching now for everyone else let's dive in killing joel is essentially the same as killing daryl dixon or rick grimes you just don't do it if you're going to do it you had better do it for the right reasons and it has to be something that moves the story. When it comes to beloved characters like these, there has to be a level of respect shown as well. Case in point, going back to the original Last of Us, Tess. Look how they wrote that character off. She went out strong. She went out on her own terms. And she went out a hero doing what she had to do, knowing she was going to die anyway, and helping Joel and Ellie on with their mission. That's how you do that. Naughty Dog did not do anything to justify Joel's death. And at the end of the day, it was more for shock value, which thanks to the pre-launch leaks that came out, there was none. I'll be one of the very few to say this. I actually liked playing as Abby. I didn't have the knee-jerk reaction that a lot of people did where it's like i don't want to be this bitch i don't want to play this i wanted to see what the backstory of this character was going to be in fact i liked her character more than ellie at some point during the game and leading into the big finale i wasn't sure exactly which of the two i was going to be rooting for to come out on top I enjoyed seeing her journey in the story and how the events of the first game affected her world and led her on this path of vengeance. It's been said many times that the reason Rick Grimes' group in The Walking Dead are considered the heroes is because we followed them from the start. Had we followed, let's say, the saviors from the beginning of their journey, then we may view Rick Grimes as the villain. I mean, think about it. He killed a bunch of their people while they were sleeping, and he never even had an interaction with them. With this second story, an alternate view, we get the chance to do that. And it worked, because people lost their fucking minds. That said, there are so many moments in the game where it can't get out of its own way that it would take too long to list them all. One of the biggest, though, was when we were playing as Abby. We have to get to the hospital to get some meds to save a patient who's a friend of ours now, and after at least an hour-long mission, we're successful. We get the meds, save her life, only to see the patient killed off in the very next scene. What the fuck? 
Why did you waste my time with that stupid, time-consuming journey for absolutely nothing? And that is the overwhelming theme of this game. It's all for nothing. Now, you can argue that she used her last gasp to save Abby, but still in all, that was a huge waste of time. Many, if not most, of the side missions are a little bit more than just time fillers. They are repetitive. Now, not to be outdone, that leads us to the ending. Ellie, who for over 20 hours of gameplay has been hunting Abby to avenge Joel. She has Abby submerged underwater, and as Abby is about to be drowned, Ellie lets her go instead. What? First of all, had Naughty Dog thought about it long enough, the outcome should have been left to the player's choice with alternate final ending scenes based on the decision made. That would have made a huge difference in the overall fan backlash to this game. But there was no choice. No. You are going to understand that this is the right ending, and it is so horrible. Now, let's talk about the proper things that they did. The visual work is very good. These are some of the strongest facial designs that I have seen to date. Definitely up there with Horizon Zero Dawn. The journey tends to be extremely repetitive, and battles are reduced to mashing either the square or triangle button. Naughty Dog had my blind faith and trust due to their past track record. That's all gone now. This abomination should have been aborted, and I'm surprised the box art doesn't come with a rainbow flag on it. I mean, I couldn't care less about there being gay characters in the game. I love the first one. But the idea that you're trying to argue for the LGBTQ equality in the post-apocalypse, where murder is legal in the absence of law enforcement, is hilariously bad. To make things worse, Naughty Dog has been on a campaign to silence opposition from abusing copyright laws on YouTube opinion videos to what is happening at the time of this video, which is getting Metacritic to not allow any negative posts. I've tried for a week. It won't take it. Major game retailers have temporarily stopped accepting trade-ins due to the overwhelming demand for Last of Us 2 returns. Those three points should tell you what you need to know about this game. I've watched so many other people who I respect and seen their reviews of this game because I just couldn't put it all together in my head. It was just such a mindfuck. I knew at the end of the first game, that was an amazing game. I knew at the end of every Uncharted game, that was an amazing game. At the end of this game, I was like, what the fuck just happened? And the fact that I didn't know if it was horrible or decent or good, it's not going to be good. Some of the comments other people, big time streamers have made that I really thought hit the nail on the head include things like that wasn't the game i wanted it was pointless i'm disappointed this game is a big what the fuck and my favorite it's a revenge story without the revenge if that doesn't sum this game up then what does i'm gonna borrow a quote from the first game it can't be for nothing and yet, in the end, it really was. The fact that a week after my first playthrough, and I'm still wondering what I thought of this game, tells me it can't be very good. And that's why I am sadly giving The Last of Us 2 a below average score of 5 out of 10. Thanks for watching the video. Click on the like button if you liked it. Click on the like button if you didn't like it. 
and go ahead and subscribe if you're not already a subscriber and i'll see you right here on all night gaming but a different one see there's a sequel it wasn't as good <laughs>